lies. We don't have anything to do uh, with what happens with guests once they leave the stage. Abuse. We think it is long overdue for Turnabout Ranch to be held accountable for what happened to Hannah. Psychosis. He's the Turnabout Ranch student accused of murdering a staff member, injuring another, and then stealing a vehicle in an attempt to escape. Today we'll be looking into one of the most controversial aspects of the Dr. Phil TV show that has put the host into hot water. And to this very day, many are still dealing with the mental turmoil their experiences have caused them. For decades, Phil McGraw, more famously known as Dr. Phil, has provided TV audiences with endless stories about troubled teenagers. Whether they're clashing with their parents, their friends, or the law, Phil has always claimed that his main goal is to help his guests. The thing is, over the years, many critics have said that his show is more focused on spectacle than counseling. Still, the doctor has been known to encourage his participants to seek out further treatment at facilities dedicated to helping a troubled youth. One location he was known to recommend is Turnabout Ranch in Escalante, Utah. This facility promotes itself as a venue for experiential therapy, using the lifestyle of a working cattle ranch to help their students learn about leadership and teamwork. Alongside therapy and education programs, it seemed to be an ideal place for Dr. Phil's guests to get some real-world experience and start to turn their lives around. But underneath this noble goal, there was a darker reality. In February 2021, Hannah Archuleta emerged with a shocking story. At 17 years old, she appeared on Dr. Phil, although she went by Ray at that point. In a 2019 episode that has now been largely scrubbed from the internet, at the time, Hannah had been struggling after learning that her mother was terminally ill with liver failure, which fueled the multiple violent meltdowns that landed her on the talk show. After taping her episode, Dr. Phil recommended Turnabout Ranch to her parents, and she was taken there directly from the studio. But her experience at the ranch was anything but therapeutic. Hannah claimed that she was assaulted by a male night watchman only 10 days after arriving at the facility. She did not initially report the incident out of fear, but a month later, the same staff member allegedly did it again prompting her to speak to a female staffer about her experiences. Rather than receive any help, the troubled young woman claims that she was called a liar. After her report, Hannah faced immediate retaliation from the ranch. She was subjected to punishments such as spending extra time picking up manure, walking in circles around a horse corral, and sitting at a desk facing a wall for hours. She was also forced to perform ranch labor outside in below freezing temperatures, and was made to sleep on a wooden plank with no pillow for many nights. As she states, all of this was made worse by a string of verbal abuse, as she was allegedly called weak, manipulative, pathetic, and stupid by employees of the ranch throughout. Hannah made this information public in a lawsuit against the ranch, filed by famous women's rights lawyer Gloria Allred. We think it is long overdue for Turnabout Ranch to be held accountable for what happened to Hannah. The facility quickly responded to these accusations, stating that they had taken immediate action when Hannah had made her report, but were unable to perform a full inquiry because her father, Tony, had removed her from the facility and had refused to communicate with them afterwards. When correspondence did resume, it was through Allred's law firm who contacted the ranch to discuss the potential lawsuit and an out-of-court cash payment. The ranch also claimed that the opposing legal counsel's report to the media was incomplete, and this was not the only pushback the lawsuit received. Tony Archuleta had also spoken out against local law enforcement, who he said failed to take the report seriously and swept the incident under the rug. Garfield County Sheriff Danny Perkins pushed back against these claims, especially since his department was not part of the lawsuit. Perkins said he was sickened by the accusation that law enforcement would ignore the issue, and said that the Archuletas were, quote, obviously dishonest. While this story was shocking to the public, it was actually the second lawsuit that Turnabout Ranch was facing at the time. In fact, the public would soon discover that shortly prior to these national headlines, there was an incident much more deadly. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. 
The smartphone is possibly the most used piece of technology in modern life, and that is why having a good case is so important. This is where Casetify comes into the picture. With a myriad of colors, designs, and styles to pick from, you cannot go wrong. For one, their latest protection technology, EcoShock, is embedded in their iPhone 14 Impact series to protect your phone. With over 20% increased protection, they managed to keep it slim, and it's perfect to hold in your hand every single day. And these aren't just silly buzzwords, they provide protection for up to 11.5 feet drops. Casetify worries about the small things as well, with a raised camera ring to protect the lens from backfalls. They also have raised bezels for extra screen protection without sacrificing swipe convenience. And on top of this, their cases are made with 65% recycled and plant-based materials. This allows them to achieve a 20% carbon emission reduction. So if you want to take a look for yourself, go to casetify.com slash gfm today to get 15% off your cases. The link will also be down in the description below. Prior to Hannah's experience at Turnabout Ranch, there was an incident much more deadly. This other story stemmed from a tragic event in December of 2016, when an Arizona teenager named Clay Brewer was living at the facility. Sent away after struggling with an addiction to prescription painkillers, he had been there for less than a week before attempting to swallow bleach. Soon after, he revealed his plans to escape, but none of his fellow students knew the true nature of this pain until he put it into action. On the 6th of December, a brewer and another resident got up at dawn to begin their morning chores. But when staffer James Woolsey came by to check on them, brewer attacked him with a metal bar. He hit Woolsey over and over again in the head so violently that he soon passed away from his wounds. After this attack, Brewer took Woolsey's keys and tried to escape in his car, but couldn't get it to start. He then went to a cabin that the other resident had run to for safety, finding them, a few more kids, and a female staffer named Alicia Keller inside. Brewer started to attack Keller threatening to destroy her if she didn't hand over her own car keys. After several lashes to the head, Keller threw the keys onto the sidewalk, then led the other teens to the woods nearby, where they could wait safely for law enforcement to arrive. Keller may have survived the day, but she was left permanently disabled by the attack, and died just two years later. After making it off the ranch in Keller's car, a brewer encountered authorities on the road and led them on a high-speed chase through the town. During the pursuit, the city's mayor and his wife were almost struck by Brewer's stolen vehicle, and it continued until sheriff's deputies executed a maneuver that caused the teen to crash. He was then taken into custody and later convicted of murder and aggravated assault, leaving everyone involved shocked by all the young man had done to escape. Sheriff Perkins stated that he had no idea why the teen decided he needed to go so far, even to get away. Brewer never reported any abuse, but told police that he had woken up that day feeling heartless and said in court that his addiction had caused him to lose his mind. Two years later, a lawsuit was filed on behalf of Brenda Woolsey, James' widow, who claimed that Brewer never should have been accepted to the ranch in the first place. The facility's standards state that they don't allow individuals to express aggressive or harmful behavior and the program is not designed for minors who are suffering from withdrawals. Despite this, Brewer was still accepted to the ranch, which the lawsuit claimed endangered the lives of its employees and residents, and made the facility liable for Woolsey's death. An attorney for the ranch stated that Brenda had no grounds for a lawsuit, and all she could hope to receive was Utah's standard workers' compensation payout. The ranch never took any blame for the incident, leaving many to wonder why Brewer's presence at the facility was ever allowed. While these incidents were not the first of this nature to be reported in the teen rehabilitation industry, they were surprisingly not even the only high-profile ones in the state. In September of 2020, Paris Hilton had publicly called for the closure of the Provo Canyon School, 
another Utah facility for troubled teens, which she attended for 11 months when she was 17 years old. Another former resident of the school, Kylie Havy, recounted memories of students being put into solitary confinement, having their needs denied, and compared the facility to a low-level juvenile prison. The campaign against the school, helped by the nonprofit organization Breaking Code Silence, led to the passing of a bill in March of 2021 for more regulation. Hilton's testimonies had actually inspired Hannah Archuleta to speak up publicly in the first place about her experience at Turnabout Ranch. In June of 2021, as it made its way through court, Hannah's lawsuit encountered a significant obstacle. A Utah judge sided with the ranch by concluding that her allegations against them were medical malpractice claims, while bafflingly choosing not to focus on the assaults themselves. Archuleta's attorney argued that the staffer who assaulted her wasn't a medical provider, and the punishment her client faced in the wake of her report wasn't treatment. Despite this, the judge granted the facility's motion to dismiss the case and did so without prejudice, meaning that Archuleta could still file the suit again at a later date. She did so, but she also turned to another target. In October, Hannah sued Dr. Phil and Viacom CBS for negligence, alleging that McGraw had pressured her into attending Turnabout Ranch after she appeared on his show, calling it necessary if she wanted to have any chance at a good life. The lawsuit claimed that the TV personality made unqualified positive representations about the camp and noted that although McGraw does have a doctorate in clinical psychology, he has not been permitted to practice since he voluntarily surrendered his license in 2006. He also allegedly said that if the reset button isn't hit, Hannah would likely end up on a one-way street to shock therapy. Hannah's parents were under so much pressure to sign the papers to have her committed that her mother reportedly had a panic attack in the studio. Meanwhile, staffers on the show assured her that McGraw was personally invested in helping the family, but they also never informed them about the events surrounding Clay Brewer. A representative for the show said that the case would be vigorously contended, and it was for several more months. During this time, another famous guest of Dr. Phil emerged to share her story. Danielle Brigoli had appeared on an episode in 2016 and went viral immediately with her challenge for audience members to catch her outside. She managed to spin her meme status into a successful rap career as Bad Baby. But before that, she had been sent to Turnabout Ranch after appearing on McGraw's show. In fact, she had been at the facility at the same time as Brewer's Rampage. In a video she uploaded in March of 2021, the Cash Me Outside girl shared her experiences at the facility, recounting stories of seeing fellow residents being forcibly restrained and bullying among the students being dismissed by the staff as, quote, maybe what they need. She claimed that punishments included being subjected to cold and menial labor, echoing Archuleta's experiences, and said that the residents were particularly helpless. When Dr. Phil responded to her allegations in an interview, he said that he and his show don't have anything to do with what happens with guests once they leave the stage, and that anything that happens is between them and the facility. Bad Baby responded to this interview by saying that her mother had signed a consent of release of information form so that progress reports about her could be sent directly from the ranch to the Dr. Phil show, and pointed out that despite McGraw's attempts to distance his brand from the facility, Turnabout Ranch was still listed on the show's official website as a trusted treatment center. Despite the multiple controversies, it remains listed there to this day. In April of 2021, a Los Angeles judge dismissed Hannah Archuleta's lawsuit against Dr. Phil, citing First Amendment rights. Although the TV show host had recommended the facility and Archuleta maintained that she had not been properly informed of the risks, the judge ruled that the alleged representations by the defendants were made in the context of creating and broadcasting a TV show. 
Since the content involved issues of mental health, which is a matter of public interest, McGraw's recommendation was considered valid. As of writing, there has been no news on these lawsuits since, but it's unlikely that Hannah will find the justice she's looking for in court. Although the passing of Utah Bill SB 127 indicates that some change may be coming to the system that traumatized her. And there you have one of the biggest controversies in Dr. Phil history. So with that thought, I think I'll end the video here. And until next time, thanks for watching.